It's the Greg B. Harrell Show, and what an absolute treat it is to have a true trailblazer, not just in the world of stand-up comedy, but the world of, of art. Wow. He's an actor, he's a director, he's a writer, he's a comic, he's he's a man of the people, Mr. Thank, Paul Rodriguez. Thank you very much, Greg. I, I mean, uh, you could say I can't keep a job, you know, but <laughs> I, I try I, I try to everything, try to do everything I can, you know, to, to stay uh, stay afloat, you know, and... Uh, and I'm um, glad, and thank you for having me on your show. Oh, thanks for being here. The, the new film is, is Holy Cash, Holy and I, Cash. I want to discuss that with you, and, and I want to discuss your comedic mind. But first, can, can you take me back to the start? What is the earliest memory you have of stand-up comedy? Well, uh, humor was big in my, in my house. You know, my, my father was uh, very funny, you know. He, he loved comedians, uh, uh, Mexican comedians in his age, you know. He loved Cantinflas, and he loved uh, Resortes, and he loved uh, just any kind of... He, he enjoyed uh, a good laugh, you know. He was a, uh, to the, to, as a matter of fact, uh, my father was driving with my brother uh, Mario when he passed away, and... His, uh, he had the same thing that uh, John Ritter had, you know, his uh, oh. aorta b- busted. And oh, I'm so uh, sorry. I don't, I don't know what they call it, but uh, yeah, and, and, you know, this happened in 08, and, and blood started to come out of his nose, and, and he looked at it, and he told, uh, in Spanish it rhymes, he, to- he, he told uh, uh, Mario, he says, oh, the, my tomato juice is coming out. <laughs> so, and he, he passed on, but he always uh, admired uh, comedy, and I think, I think it's, a, it's a gene, it has to be, because... I had no intentions of doing stand up. I, I went, you know, grew up in Compton and I, I went to uh I went to the Air Force, you know, when I when I got out I was going to college and, and I just fell into this. But uh yeah, humor is it's not something you invent. I have a lot of people come up to me and goes, I wanna do stand up because that's the latest thing, you know, you, there's so many clubs you can get up there. But it's not something you wanna do, it's something something you have to do, you know. It's mm. who you are, you know. And uh, that's why I I, I, I like people like uh, you know, uh, McDonald, you know, I, I love him because he, he was just, the way he talked, it just made me laugh. You know, yeah. a lot of times it's, it's, uh, it's not the joke, but it's, it's, it's the personality, you know, it's a, it's a way of, uh, of laying things out. And I guess I was, uh, I was born to do this, you know. You're such a special comic and a special talent to watch because you perfectly marry this idea of onstage movement and your words. It's, it's very clear that Every element, every detail matters to you in the onstage performance. Well, I, I think you're being too kind. You know, uh, what I do basically has been a mystery to me because, uh, uh, you know, it, it, in the hood and in, in Compton, uh, um, when I first, uh, when we first moved in there, um, I was uh, a minority within a minority group. You know, and uh, and I think what what saved me from uh, from being. Uh, uh, shunned or, or, or attacked, really, a very violent place uh, when I went there. Uh, the riots had just happened. Um, I remember the reason was there was a, a black woman who who had been shot, uh, I don't know, 18, 19 times. Her name was Eula Love, and the reason I remember because that was the first routine I did. And I, uh, I went on amateur night at the comedy store, and I said, the, the, the news was talking about uh, they believe uh, if this was excessive, you know, she was wearing, she had a knife, it was a butter knife, you know, and she, they, they were going to shut off her, uh, her uh, water bill or light bill, I forget what it was, but it was something like that, you, you, you know, you can't lie nowadays because people get on the internet, you'll find out I'm, mm-hmm. I'm speaking truth, but uh, I didn't think that her death was funny, what I found funny is uh, uh, there was, they were questioning whether this was excessive, you know, <laughs> right. and I said, and I remember saying, uh, ah, Look, I, I don't know if it was excessive, but they had to reload, you know, <laughs> and the audience broke out. You know, they, you know when, you, when you have to reload, either you're a bad shot, you shouldn't be a cop, or you, hell yes, it's excessive. <laughs> and uh, and uh, and, I, and I remember getting that first laugh, and then it was uh, it was an addiction, you know. Wow, wow, really? They think that's funny, and, and irony is it's funny, and and that led to where uh, all the way here to to your uh, couch, you know. It's just been something that I'm glad I'm able to. Uh, to have uh, found something that I that I do in life, it's an epiphany when I went up there. It was, uh, you know, most people tell you, well, I, I want to express myself. The truth is, you want to get laid and, and you want to make some money. You know? <laughs> and th- those two things are are, are very uh, very potent uh, stimulants. You know? Your style is also so impeccable. It echoes to a, a golden era of Hollywood. It, it feels to the audience that we're watching watching, I should say, a true professional. Well, I've been lucky. You know, I was I, I was in the heyday of. Uh, 
there, look, there are great comedians coming out. There will always will be. I'm not the kind that the, the dogs on the last generation. All these comedians today, no. no. Brilliant comics coming up, you know. But I was fortunate that when I was at the comedy store, uh, you know, it was a time of of uh, Jim Carrey, and it was a time of uh, Howie Mandel. It was a time of Dice Clay. It was a time of Richard Pryor. I remember I, I, um, I met C. Shore. I auditioned for her, and, and she put me to work at the, in the parking lot, right? Hmm. And uh, and I was about to just quit and go, oh, man, you know, this is insulting. You know, I'm Mexican. I'm working in the parking lot. And a guy named Harris Pete, uh, he's in Montana, and I talk to him every once in a while. He said, hold on, hold on there, hombre. He goes, look, uh, being the parking lot guy is probably the best job. He goes, because when these big stars come with their cars and they give you their keys, they want to know about you. They want to know who you are, what, where are you going, and that's, a, that's an opportunity. And just like he said, that happened. You know, uh, One day, uh, Richard Pryor drove in with a, a Corniche uh, Rolls Royce. It was <laughs> just beautiful, right? And uh, he, the first thing he told me after I opened the door, and I was really uh, starstruck, he says, he says, where's Quentin? <laughs> Quentin was uh, uh, the guy that I replaced. And I said, well, uh, I don't know about Quentin. I said, but I'm in charge of this. He goes, he goes uh, what's your old name? I said, pa Paul Rodriguez. He goes, uh, you know this car is worth more than your arm, ain't it? I said, uh, yeah, yeah. You know? He said, you be careful. I have no scratches. And I said, I will take care of it. I'll stand right by it. I was nervous. But he was putting me on. Uh, and I got to meet him, you know. And, yeah. and that, it, was, uh, it was a fortuitous for me because uh, I got to meet him. I got to know him. I worked for him, and I uh, I love Richard, you know, and, and he fired me, to tell you the truth. Hmm. Uh, I wasn't the kind of guy that was always trying to tell him a joke, but I was working, doing, you know, uh, doing whoever dropped out, and uh, and he said, you know, you don't need to be working for me. He goes, you got talent. I'll tell Mitzi to put you on, hmm. and he fired me. You're fired, and was, <laughs> nicest way I've ever been fired, and, um, you know, I didn't work with him for him that long, but uh, had I just been... Uh, stubborn and told Harris Pete, oh, you know, Mitzi's going to put me in the parking lot because I'm Mexican. The, the last guy's Mexican. She puts all the Mexicans in the parking lot. If I'd have took that attitude, I, I would have I missed uh, having... Uh, yeah, it's all connected. Ha yeah, having uh, been around Richard, you know, and and uh, one of the last uh, times uh, it was Paul Mooney, who's also passed on. You know, that, that whole era is going. Uh, and I, we, we put, a, put a show special, a tribute to Richard Pryor, and there's all kinds of big stars there, and I have it on tape where he goes, well, I don't know most of you MFs. Uh, I don't know most of y'all, but I know uh, Paul Mooney and Paul Rodriguez, you know? And I'm saying, wow, man, dudes, give me props. And, <laughs> and uh, so I, special. I, I really uh, have that uh, tape, and I, you know, when somebody uh, uh, that you admire uh, says your name, it's like when Johnny Carson says, ladies and gentlemen, you know, th there are certain yeah. moments in life that, that are etch, you know, that, that baptize you. And, and, and that, that was a great moment for me. Your first Tonight Show appearance, you, you mentioned Johnny Carson. I mean, what a special set that was. I mean, the, the, even the, the closer, every moment, your style. I, I've rewatched that set so many times. I was nervous like you couldn't believe, you know, because of my, my hero, my idol was Freddie Prince, the late, great Freddie Prince. I was in the service when... I was uh, in a radar site in Iceland when I, I heard through the tele, teletext that he had uh, taken his own life, and I couldn't understand that. You know, I, I began to cry for someone I never met, hmm. and um, and I, I had already told myself, "Wow, I, 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 when I get out of here and I go back uh, to Los Angeles, I hope maybe I could go see one of his tapings of his show or meet him." You know, and uh, when when that possibility was taken from me i just felt this deep sadness you know later of course I, i've met uh his son terrific kid and um you know i, I have great memories of him but it, it's um it's uh I'm old. I forgot what the question was. <laughs> you know, you've, you've hit on another one of your brilliant skill sets. You, you so seamlessly take the emotional, seemingly topics that should be heavy on the heart, and you find the funny. You, you find the laugh. Well, yeah, you know, I, I've been uh, privy to, to befriend uh, comics that I admire. You know, Rodney Dangerfield and I hung out uh, a lot, and I really loved him, too. And uh, he told me, he says, uh, a joke should be funny, Ten years after your death, uh, they should be able to laugh. So uh, hmm. don't use uh, uh, prominent colloquial stuff. Uh, you know, uh, at the time it was uh, it was uh, the uh, Bill Clinton and uh, hmm. uh, what's the girl's name? See, I, f I forgot that. Monica Lewinsky. Monica Lewinsky <laughs> incident, right? 
and a lot of comics were doing that. And he said, don't do that. He goes, in a few years, that'll fade, you know? Mm. And he says, uh, use stuff that's uh, that's inherent, you know? And if you look at him, do his thing, it's, he's been dead for, for a while now. And uh, and it's still funny because it talks about uh, himself, his wife, his uh, children, his kids, his family, you know? You're always going to have that. So try to make it poignant. If, if you make a joke about uh, Joe Biden or, or, or Donald Trump, uh, that'll fade. So yeah. 10, 20 years from now, be, there's a new generation going, what's he talking about? You mm-hmm. know? So uh, Matters of the heart will e- always. Exactly, exactly. You know, you'll always have a family, you know, and, uh, and uh, th- those are the topics. And you learn from these guys, yeah. you know. What an admirable guy. I was one of five uh, people that, was, uh, that spoke at Rodney's uh, funeral. Wow. And it was uh, Jay Leno, and uh, it was uh, Jim Carrey, myself, uh, uh, Stiller, uh, Stiller Mira, mm-hmm. and uh, and Bob Saget, the late Bob Saget. Wow. Mm. And uh, and I remember, uh, I, th- I think it was I think it was Jay Leno who said one of the funniest lines. All co- the top comics were there. He said, uh, "It's sad that uh, uh, that uh, Rodney had to die to to give." Uh, Bob Saget a job, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's as sad as I think about it. They're, they're, they're gone too, you know. I, I feel like I could, you and I could wax rhapsodic for m- <laughs> many, many hours. But I do want to talk about the new film. Yeah. Holy cash! My goodness, what, what, what a premise! Again, this echoes to. Uh, it almost to me has a, a Abbott and Costello, Laurel and Hardy. There's a, a caper going on here. Can you give us the elevator pitch? Yeah, you know th- this movie uh, in, the, in this day of uh, artificial intelligence, uh, which doesn't scare me because if you think about it, artificial intelligence will always be artificial. Mm. You know, I, I use the natural stupidity. You know, <laughs> everything has to have the the yin and the yang, and yeah. uh, I um. I wrote this story about uh, characters and people that I saw in the hood, in the neighborhood, you know. It's basically about two cons, Jay Moore uh, and myself. And it's hard to get Jay Moore to work because he's married to the owner of the Lakers, you know, so uh, <laughs> so he don't need a gig. Uh, but uh, he, he, he and I had done a picture before. We established a, a friendship, you know. It's very important to have friends, mm. you know. And uh, I did this movie with a... It's not it's, it's a bunch of cameos. No, it, it, they, they're not just there gratuitously. They're there for a reason. I have uh, Danny Trejo, wow. Trejo and Luis Guzman oh, and, wow. and um, uh, Felipe Esparza and uh, Jeff Garcia. In fact, I have everybody named Garcia. There's like two million of them <laughs> and, uh, here in Los Angeles. But uh, it, it's basically the story is, is, is two cons who are looking. They come out of jail. They know that one more strike and they're going to be there for life. So, so they hit upon religion, you know. And uh, the more flamboyant and the more outlandish, I, I do fake miracles. I use the people from the halfway house to, wow. to do miracles. And, and everything is going great, you know, uh, uh, until something happens that, that stops that. And I won't uh, yeah, uh, no spoilers. Uh, divul- <laughs> divulge it. But, uh, you know, it is very, very uh, rare, seldom, uh, aberration, where an independent movie uh, like mine's uh, gets to be shown in and. In, in, theaters like amc yeah i'm very proud of that if nothing else happens for this movie that should uh, i'm proud of that because they don't just take any movie uh, the good people at amc told me that in the last what 10 years they've taken maybe four or five pictures wow you know it's, it's very it's very rare and they do all their their checks and uh, I, I didn't get this movie it's not a, a latino movie per se i mean uh, it's 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 the people that i see that are around me you know and I, I wasn't pandering to a particular race or anything like that. It's just these are the people that, that in my story came about. And luckily that I had established friendships with them. But but I hope people will see it uh, October 11th. You know, I mean, making yeah. a movie is about as close as a man can get to having a child. I really do feel that. And tomorrow wow. I'm going to go to the premiere at uh, Century City. Um, I don't know when this will air, but uh, uh, the premiere will be uh, October 2 uh, uh, at the AMC. And the movie's released, uh, a small, you know, 10 cities. On AMC, but but if you're listening to me and you're not in one of those cities, uh, believe me, if you call whatever theater, we have permission to call any theater and, and say, hey, you know, I'd like to see Holy Cash. Yeah. Well, uh, just call them. We'll make it available to them, you know, and I'm hoping if, if this picture has success, well, then, uh, like, uh, you know, I should be lucky enough to have, like, a, the success of Fridays, but it's in that vein, you know? Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's NC-17. I wouldn't. I wouldn't take anybody, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, 
15 and below, uh, keep them home. Uh, not that <laughs> yeah. the movie's uh, uh, profane, uh, but you know, it's not the kind of uh, the jokes that might be suited. But, uh, but you know, I don't put no limits on humor, and they tested it. Uh, you know, I don't know anything about editing and all that. That's a that's a craft uh, in itself. But I've been in this business for so long that I reached out to friends, to the best. You know, mm -hmm. I said, I asked Mike Binder, who I asked all the friends that I know, you know, I listen, I, what do I do here? And they, they all helped me out. And yeah, I directed it. Yeah, I wrote it. But in, in fact, it, w it was written by those people who gave me ideas, you know, mm. and, and I, I'm proud of it. But the public will vote with their feet and their cash. And, and uh, you know, I'm an old guy. I'm, my health is not the best. But if this is the last thing I do, I'm I'm good uh, I'm good to go to the by and by by this you know I put two years you know wow. it was so long my investors thought it was some kind of Ponzi scam you know they <laughs> they were going hey is this movie ever gonna come out or, you know it's been two years come on yeah exactly well uh, I would tell them you know it's like a good soup man it takes time but the hell with the good soup where's my cash <laughs> but uh, but I uh, I believe that uh, you know I learned something in four years of doing stand up yeah. And, and the people that I worked with, and uh, I'll I'll uh, I'll abide by by their uh, their verdict. You know, if if, if they go see it, uh, uh, they'll tell other people. And if they don't, well, then I deserve to be obscure. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cash is the film. Go see Paul's movie. And Paul, thank you so much for for joining me here today. And and thank you even more so for the art you've put into the world. Well, I'm glad you call it that. My mom called it a waste of time, but uh, <laughs> my mom told me what she was very funny too. She said. The only thing impossible in this world is to keep you quiet. <laughs> I guess she was right, but thank you, Greg, for, uh, for your help. And whoever's listening, uh, if you have a few dollars to spare, I, I know it's very expensive now, uh, go to AMC and, and check out Holy Cash. I think you'll, I think you'll laugh, and that's, that's my, whole, my whole point. No AI. This, uh, this was done just by a guy who was in the hospital after quadruple bypass mm. trying to find a... Trying to find a uh, a way home. We're all glad you're still here. Mr. Paul Rodriguez.